A few years ago, I stumbled across the perfume house Maison Louis Marie and I fell in love with the number 4 Bois de Balancourt. So when I saw that they came out with a discovery set, I had to get it and I had to try it. So today we will discover the brand Maison Louis Marie and some of their perfumes. So my thought was because I love the number four so much that I'm going to love every single one of the perfume house. I have to tell you, I like I think most of them or all of them but it's not like a strong love with all of them but let's get into it so this is what the discovery set looks like and as you can imagine I'm not super happy about it because it is really really pretty and very simple and minimal but there is nothing to it like you see the perfumes you don't even know what they're called you have to tell by looking on the bottles it doesn't say it on the paper you do not have an imagery or the main notes nothing it's just this simple discovery set with the ingredients on it and what i didn't know is that it is made in the usa I thought it was a French brand, but maybe that's why it was so hard for me to get the number four a few years back when I fell in love with it. Now you can get it more easily, but back then it was so, so hard. So let's try them out. The first one is number two, which is called Le L'Enfant. And this is in the same family as Préville. I don't know if it's called like that, but the perfume from Aesop, which is a perfume my husband wants to own <laughs> so, so bad. And I'm always like, mm, I'm not too sure. This is really crazy because it has such a strong forest vibe to it, like very green and wet and earthy smelling. And this is exactly what this one is smelling like as well it's like you're standing in the forest and it has rained the whole day so the floor is all wet and you can definitely smell it then it gets a little more fluffy and green with some slight sweet touches because the forest vibe is very poetic and interesting but a little bit more unwearable if you don't mix it with something in my opinion for me but the sweetness makes it more digestible and the image that I get when I smell it is you are standing in this dark wet forest waiting for the rain to stop and then you see the light at the end of the forest and you walk into the light and you see this bright field with a lot of fresh grass and the sun is shining. So you have this development with the perfume because at first it's like really dark and earthy and wet and then it gets more fluffy and bright. And so I like it for the image that I get. I would definitely not wear it, but I can definitely see my husband loving this one. And something to say, because I'm not going to tell you with every one of those perfumes, the performance of all of them is not the best in my experience. On my skin, the longevity is about four hours, I would say. I would have to overspray big time for it to hold the whole day, every one of them. And then we have, of course, the number four, which is called Bois de Balancourt, as I said, and I think I will spray it on my skin because I just love it so much. Mm. It still is so, so beautiful to me. Sometimes very distinct scents are nice to me in a specific time of my life, and then I'm over it. But with this one, 
it's just so interesting and special but still very beautiful and cozy so the story behind this and me is that i was in seoul south korea and i was sitting in a cafe with my husband and a woman walked by us and she was smelling so good and she was actually wearing santal 33 by le labo back then i didn't want to spend the le labo money and i couldn't so i was searching high and low for alternatives that i liked and a few years ago back then actually santal 33 was all the rage and so there were a lot of alternatives out there and i did not like any of them this specific smell can lean very strange smelling a lot of people actually smell i think dill pickles when they smell santal 33 so i don't know maybe it's the sandalwood and some spices mix that makes this kind of smell i know what they mean and i had it with a lot of those alternatives so when i first smelled this one i was so happy because i liked it so much more than all of the alternatives but i even now like it more than the original i have the original now in my collection and for me right now it is a little bit too strong and too much this one is a more wearable santal 33 to me only thing is santal 33 is a beast like the performance is wow this one is more quiet but then again it is the reason why i also wear this one because it is not as loud and extreme <laughs> as the other one but this is to me a very creamy woody sandalwood with spices and some green freshness to it it is definitely unisex but it has this fluffy sweetness to it which makes me okay with wearing it but also i can see it on men and i've smelt it on men and i love it on men i love it on anyone actually it's so beautiful it's so beautiful and as i said it's a more wearable version and i hope not that many people <laughs> will smell some dill pickles when they smell this one and spoiler alert it is still my favorite from the bunch but let's continue with another beautiful one which is called number nine Vallée des Farnay and this is the best peppery scent I've ever smelled because pepper to me can ruin a fragrance and then I'm only going to smell the pepper and it's just too much pepper is a note that makes perfumes very interesting and intriguing but if you use it too much for me it's all i can smell but this one is very classy and elegant and ladylike it could be easily in the range of chanel because it has this cool fresh but still that je ne sais quoi to it and it has this citrusy freshness which makes it more likable and not too peppery also because there's definitely some patchouli in here and patchouli is a note that is used in a lot of those more classic elegant scents but tends to be a little bit too much for me and because of the citrus notes in here it's more wearable and likable to me in my nose and it is on my wish list because a lot of those Chanel scents I like the idea of but something is just too much for me and with this one it has this as I said elegant Chanel vibe but because it is more subdued and more quiet I can handle it a lot more and I can wear it for an everyday office scent. The next one we are gonna smell is number 12 Busval and this one I like a lot this reminds me a lot of colonia by aqua di parma again a very classic all-time favorite scent that just everybody has to have in their collection in my opinion it has this if you know something like 4711 or 
what is it called portofino by tom ford the one that does not last <laughs> it has this similar freshness to it it's citrusy and fresh but then it has some woodiness to it and some herbs mixed into it with some slight sweetness it's very round and smooth and so classy but not in a vintage kind of way it's just something that has stood the test of time and to me smells ultra sexy because i love to smell a man my husband in particular if he smells like a fresh gentleman it's so sexy to me and this one as the other ones as well is not a good performer but still very beautiful but is it extremely unique not really okay so now on to the last two scents which are one of my favorites i like them a lot the first one is number 13 which is called nouvelle vague and this one is a beachy ocean scent that a lot of perfume houses have but i think there is some coconut in here which smells a little bit synthetic to me but i like it more than soleil blanc soleil blanc is just very heavy on the tropical florals and i think it doesn't have any of them it just has more of this ozonic salty vibe with some fresh coconut water and also the coconut especially in the dry down reminds me of the coconut in virgin island water which is one of my absolute favorite perfumes of all time so this is a perfume that is on my wish list just because i love also the idea of those coconutty tropical vacation scents but most of the time i like to smell them on paper but i do not like to smell like that because it is just too heavy especially as i said with those tropical florals all mixed together with coconut but only the coconut with those salty feels is very nice and the last one in this discovery set is called cassis and this is a super realistic rose scent very suave like very soft and dainty and beautiful and airy and then there's this super soft black currant which is a note i did not like for a long long time but now i like in a lot of perfumes i think with a lot of notes it just has to be done right and this one is just so nice because it isn't the very synthetic sickly sweet black currant it's more elegant but still the black currant makes it super fruity and fresh and summery but because of the rose it's still elegant and something to wear every day i like it a lot it's very very nice so there you have it these were all of the perfumes from the discovery set reviewed by me and as i said the number four is still my favorite but i discovered a lot of perfumes that are on my wish list right now because i do like right now scents to be more soft and easy to wear and a lot of those scents are just like that they are easy to wear and soft not too loud but still they have something special to them so that i crave them and i want to wear them so you will see if some of them will appear in future perfume haul videos but until then let me know if you've tried any of those perfumes which one is your favorite and why which one do i have to look into as well and i hope to see you in my next video bye bye <laughs>